Hi everyone, back again for another video. Today looking at a goal that was scored in the SSL over the weekend in a match between Kalmar Sund, the team in blue, and Vekhe, the team in white. So I'll let the goal play through and then we'll go into the analysis after that. Uh, bending in, in Kalmar Sunds mål. Ah, ja, 5-5, 1 och 10 kvar. Målet kom lite ologiskt. Det var ingen som talade för Vekhe direkt. Nu och så vänder man och det får man som gör mål på tal om... Okay, so it starts with the face-off. I'll let the clip play through for a second or two so that we can do an initial situation analysis. Okay, so here's where we'll do the first analysis of the situation and the defensive pairs. And really, this goal is only an analysis of defensive pairs. It's fairly straightforward. So let's go through the pairs right now. So here's a pair. This is quite obvious. Here's a pair. This is the next most obvious. Now from here, it can be a little bit confusing. So you'd probably think that this player would be paired up with this player here. This player would be paired up probably with this player here as that player seems to have direction going this way, deeper or further forward. And the last pair would be these two players here. That's how it appears on the surface. However, I'm not sure that that's what the white team had in mind. From what it looks like, it looks like they are more holding formation in this W shape, or you could call it a house 221 formation. And it also appears as though this player here seems to be paired up with this player here in that they are looking to apply pressure to that player. So that's the initial situational analysis. So we'll move the clip through a little bit further and then look at the pairings. Okay, so let's look at the pairings here now. So we have a pair here, a pair here, and then again we need to decide with these next three players who is actually paired up with who. It should be that this player is paired up with this player here, this player is paired up with this player here, and this player is actually paired up with this player here. However, the way the white team is posturing in their positions looks more like this. This player is paired up with this player here. This player is paired up with this player here. And you can see that this player is paired up with no one. And this player here is essentially free. They are unmarked. So we'll move it through a little bit further and we'll see how it transpires from here. Okay, so now let's have a look at the pairings. The most obvious switch is with this player here. He has left his player, this one, and he is now applying pressure to this player who is about to receive the ball. This player seems to have locked on to this guy here. This is a pair, and from here what you'd say is probably this guy is paired up with this guy, and this guy is paired up with this guy back here, this blue player, although this player and this player, they don't seem too concerned with who they should be paired up with. They're more heading back towards their net to defend the area. And the key thing here is that by this guy here being free and receiving the ball, it has now created a two-on-one against this player here. And that is because this player back here, and it's not necessarily this player's fault, but it is by virtue of the white team's formation and the way they organized their defense and the way they implemented it, that this player receiving the ball was free because this player was not paired up with anyone directly, and that has resulted in a two-on-one at the net against this defender. So let's talk about what the attacking team did well. One thing to note is that it seems that this player here, who was the eventual recipient of the ball in this area, they seem to be a defenseman. So one of the things that the blue team has done well is rotate their players to different parts of the court. And I think they've caught the white team off guard by doing so. So we'll just have a look as that plays through what he actually does. He receives the ball, passes it back, 
So you would think that he's a defenseman. From here, you get further indication that he is actually a defenseman because his teammate is pointing at him to uh, basically take a position further back in the court as a defenseman normally would. But he doesn't listen to him and probably for the best in this situation. And as a result of him moving forward, he finds space and exploits the way that the white team have structured their defense. The other thing which should not be underestimated is the reading of the play that was made by this player here. He's the one who sent the long overhead pass to this player down here. And in order to do that, that pass sender had to recognize that this player here had space and that there was more space down in this area of the court and that there was a two-on-one there or at least that the player he was sending it to had a good chance to create a goal scoring opportunity. He also had to do that while under pressure from the white team. Granted it is not a huge amount of pressure but if you think about it from his perspective at the court level, the passing lane over the top to this player is not immediately obvious. This player took the initiative based on their reading of the play that there was space and they could just bypass pretty much the entire defensive structure by playing the ball over the top. The other thing which should be noted is that this player who received the ball, the long ball, they actually played it really well. They passed it first time as soon as it hit the ground and they were able to put it straight through where they wanted it to this player over here moving towards the front of the net. So really nice execution of the skill there. Obviously that was a contributing factor as well. So let's have a look at what the white team could have done better now. I'll just move it forward from the face off a bit. So you can see that they are in their W formation, as I pointed out before. And they seem fairly intent on holding this formation, whether that's by drilling or instruction by the coach or that's just what they're comfortable playing. They seem to stick to this defensive formation in this context quite tightly, and it ends up coming against them. So we'll move it forward a little bit further. So here's where they really come apart defensively. It's fine if you have a structure in place that you want to play. However, the essence of the game is still one for one. So everyone needs to know who their defensive assignment is. And if they don't, that's where gaps occur. You can defend the area as much as you want. You can defend the area in the middle of the court like these guys are doing. You can defend the area when they come closer to your net in front of the goal with a tight dice or whatever you'd like to do. But if each individual player does not know who their defensive assignment is and how those are going to switch as the play moves, then they don't know who they need to be aware of and who they need to take away when they are a threat. And that's what has happened here. These three players are not aware of who their direct assignment is. And I said that before when I did the first situational analysis. This player here thinks that this guy with the ball is his guy. This player here also thinks the guy with the ball is his guy. And what that means is that this player here has essentially been left to deal with two players. So there needs to be some awareness, firstly, of where the opposition players are on the court, and then some communication as to who is responsible for who. They could have easily rotated so that this guy came closer to his player here, this guy stays with his player here, and this guy could then step up and maybe apply pressure this way. Likewise, they could have rotated another way with this player here going back towards the net and the net front player coming out to match up with this player here. And then from here, this player would move this way and these guys would be paired up like this. 
Whichever way you want to go about it, there needed to be some more awareness and some communication, and ultimately they were punished for too rigidly sticking to their formation and not being flexible and reading the game as it developed. So that's it for this one. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Should the white team have structured their defense differently? Should they have rotated? Maybe it was just the net front defender who shouldn't have changed and rushed out to the player. Leave a comment if you have any thoughts. I'll let the video play through now and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Uh, bending i, i Kalmarsunds målet. Ja, 5-5. 1 och 10 kvar. Målet kom lite olagligt. Det var ingen som talade för Växjö direkt. Nu vänder man och det är Forman som gör mål. Ah,